What's going on guys? I know it's been a uh, couple months, so I wanted to get something up for you guys. Still got a lot of projects going on. Still working on snowmobiles. Um, but first things first, uh, I'm still working on this this uh, 99 Arcticat Thundercat. And what I'm doing now is I'm changing reeds, so I figured I'd show you guys how I how it's done. It's pretty simple. Uh, the first thing you do is you want to take the belt off of the secondary and primary. So get that out of the way. And then what I'll do is I'll lock the uh, the emergency brake here, or just the brake, and then you can put the parking brake on or whatever, like that. And then you can twist the secondary. That'll allow you to push it into where you can get the belt off. So you get the belt off, you get the air box out of the way. That's over there. And then uh, once you get the air box out of the way, which is just uh, a screw here and another screw here. These ones were bad, so I popped the old ones out, and then I used a uh, a screw rivet gun and put new ones in there. I ended up getting a new valve for this because I couldn't even turn it off. So, And then this sled is a 99. It had the round slide carbs on it, so I ended up putting a nice set or a decent set of uh, rack-style carbs on here, flat slides. And I got those from good buddy Mike Miller, and uh, he hooked me up with a nice set. So... Um, so the next thing you do is after you get the air box off, like I said, it's just these two screws here and it'll pop out. You might have to pop it off the back side of these carbs here because they will, the boots slide over the carburetors themselves. Some dirt in there. So pop those off and then you can pull the, uh, the air box out. And then once you get the air box out, you undo the three screws that tighten the clamps that tighten the intake flanges over the carburetors and you can pop the carburetor off and you don't really have to disconnect anything you just move it back and then there's six bolts 10 millimeter bolts at least on this for each intake flange and then those pop right off so i'll show you where i'm at um inside the garage all right okay so this is where i'm at currently these were the V-Force reeds. Uh, I'm taking these off. I'm just going to go ahead and sell them. I think it's, uh, I think it'd just be better for me if I sell these. Uh, they're in great condition. But these have uh, almost like a double set of reeds on them. But you can pop this little cage off and change the reeds out when they go bad or whatever. They're carbon fiber, so. Uh... Yeah, I ended up, the, the stock flanges, they will cut, you have to cut them flat, so you have to cut these pieces off, these little horns. So you cut those horns off so they're flat because the V-Force 3 cages are flat. They don't allow, they just have, basically have a hole. They don't allow this, the, the um, horns here to slip in, so they get cut off, so... I was having an issue with a little bit of an air leak and it was coming from, sorry about that, it was coming from these flanges. So I ended up, uh, got a recommendation from this gentleman here in Michigan. Uh, he's a pretty good mechanic and he recommended the right stuff, black one minute gasket. This stuff is awesome. Um, his name's Kerry Osborne, nice guy, super knowledgeable. Uh, he owns a shop up in, uh, it's like the northern lower peninsula of michigan i <laughs> can't remember what city so uh yeah uh carry osborne he's on facebook um uh, but either way yeah he recommended this stuff and it's great sealed those right up so that's why they're still stuck to the cages i'm just going to go ahead and sell these with the flanges on them already so i got a new set of because these are actually for the round slide carbs and so I did have the flat side carbs slipped into those. You got to kind of cram them in there. So I ended up getting a set of these from a guy here in Dearborn, Michigan, Chris Myshock. Shout out to him. Uh, great guy. He's uh, He parts out a lot of the um, Thundercats and stuff. So he gave me a real nice set of these, real clean. So no cracks or anything really. So um, I am going to take these. These are the reed cages. Uh, you got your reed pedal stops, your reed stops, if you will, and then the reeds are under there. So I'm just going to go ahead and show you how I 
to get those apart. And like I said, it's really simple. Um, I ended up getting a set of Boyas and Dual Stage Power Reads. I really like these. The throttle response is amazing on these. I mean, it's really good with these V-Force 3 reads as well, but the thing with these is that um, you can actually go down a main size in jets uh, with these, so I like that. And I went from the round slide carbs for the 99 Thundercat are 390 mains, and the flat slides are 320 mains, so now I'll be able to go down to 310. And I'm going to re-gear it as well and hopefully uh, get some pretty pretty decent gas mileage out of it. But I got these from Power, Stores, or Power, Power Sports Superstore. Um, I don't typically buy these from Boyesen because they're a little higher in price. I'll just figure out, you know, which model I need for the sled I want. This, I mean, this is really only my third set of these, but I got them on the Z, my uh, O2 ZR800 that I recently made a series on. And then also my... Uh, 95 ZR700 engine that I put in a 2000 chassis, 2000 ZR chassis, and they're awesome. So, um, yeah, I will typically go to eBay and find them. Seems like eBay, you can get them for a lower price. Sometimes you can negotiate them down five bucks or whatever, and it's free shipping. So why not, you know? So, uh, first step is to get. I've already sprayed these off just to you know make sure they're nice and, and clean. And then uh, it's it's pretty easy, you guys. I mean, you just undo these six screws right here. And um, it's a good idea when you're putting them back together to use blue Loctite. And then that way you won't have to worry about them backing out. But, I mean, they do have little tiny lock washers on them. So, and the males here, I'm expecting a couple things today. The main one is the, I got a big wheel kit on this, or a big wheel kit came on this Thundercat, and um, they didn't use the offset axle, and it needs like a, because the stock rear bogey wheels are six and three eighths of an inch. And so, they didn't use the offset axle and so the track was sitting like three quarters of an inch below the high fax. Alright, it looks like they're here. Hold on one second. Okay, so sorry about that. Let's see. This. Okay, it's got a two for you. Got a how-to video and a unboxing video. <laughs> I got these from um, Avid Products because that's where the big wheels come from. Put it inside of it. Oh, the irises are getting ready. Okay, so here's the Avid Products here. It's uh, Avid Products, it's a big wheel kit. These are eight inches. And. Uh, yeah, you gotta have an offset axle. So I went to Avid Products and they did have a three quarter inch offset axle. And they have a new owner for about a year or so now. His name's Andy, Andy Upton. Real nice guy. Avid Products. Let's see. All right, so what we got here. Ooh, that is nice looking. Holy mackerel. So these will slip in to the normal like uh, slot for the, they're just the bushings that, that push the, the screw in the side of the slide rail there in the back that you use to adjust the track tension. Slips in right there. So this replaces that black piece. And then as you can see, Instead of it being here, it lifts them up to compensate to where the track will ride on the wheel. Because at this point, there was like a... Or it'll, it'll ride on the, the, uh, the rail itself. So the rail was up here. like So there was like a three, three, three quarter inch space in between the track and the rail. 
So now this will drop the, the rail, or bring the wheel up so the rail and the track meet the way they should. And so the track will actually ride on the Hyfax and not just the wheels. So that I will show you later. So we'll put that off to the side for now. Very nice product though, for sure. Go back to our reeds here. Okay, so like I said, you just undo these three. Okay, so there's all six of those. Should be able to just put the reeds off to the side. These look like good reeds, so I'm gonna save these. Good stock reeds. I don't know how old they are, but they're in good shape. They're, uh, they're touching as well. What you want to look for is, you see that little black line right there on each one? Well, you know that the reeds are good when each one of those petals is touching there. That's oil under there, and it just gives that black line because the oil is filling in any gaps in this translucent material once it fills in those gaps with the oil it puts it just shows the dark black rubber underneath so these are all good reeds so i'm going to keep those i will put those off to the side and typically these come with Read, uh, read stops. Like they'll have a metal one that goes across there, but these don't have that. They might be in there. I'll have to check the package and go from there. Okay, so I will tell you the story that I was telling you about the ZR800. So the first time we took it out, the clutch busted, or the clutch bolt busted because I got it from someone and clearly, I'm sure they didn't know, but the clutch bolt must have been torqued down, over torqued too many times. So what happened was, is the first time we took it, the... Uh, the clutch popped off, we are 10 miles into the trail, had to tow it back. Went home the next day, it wasn't any point staying there. So, uh, I got the right clutch, and the Lord blessed me, and I got a brand spanking new one for 250 bucks, and the guy said he thought it was clutched for a 600. Well, had a purple clutch and 72 and a half gram weights in it, or 70 and a half, whatever it is, whatever it is. 71 and a half, I don't know, for the 800, either way. So, got that one on there, went back up to Grayling. Well, we went out Friday, and then went out, uh, had a great time, went out Saturday, and me and Calvin were on my 800, and it was really busy on Saturday. So, we ended up getting on a trail by M, oops, M72, I think it was like 76 or something like that. 79 North, I think, just south of M to 72. Well, I wanted to get around these people that were going super freaking slow. Oh my gosh, it was like ridiculously slow. I mean, it was like 20 miles an hour. And it was three sleds in front of me. It was a guy, looked like a younger guy, and then an older fella. And then they also had people behind us. So, stupid me, we were coming up on this trail and it, it was it turned to the right and then it went up it started going up a hill well i tried to freaking pass these people like an idiot 
and the the young kid that I was trying to pass, he sped up right as we got to the top of the hill. Well, I I wasn't thinking, and we, me and Calvin shot up over this hill on the left side of the trail like idiots, or like I like an idiot because I was the one driving. He didn't have anything to do with. It. He was just holding on for the ride. Well, we shot off the top of the hill and thank god another sled didn't meet us at the top of the hill well we shot up over the top of this this hill and it was i don't know maybe an eight foot drop and we i I didn't know it was i thought it was just going up and it was going to level out well lesson learned because that sucker dropped off and went to the right and we shot up over the top of that hill and launched and landed to the left of the trail and we were heading for two trees, like there was one here and one here, and I was heading right for the one tree, I had to cut it over, and then, like, I jerked the, the handlebars to the left, and then I jerked them back to the right to make sure that we got in between the two trees, and we ended up rolling on our side and mowed down a bunch of saplings that were like an inch and a half, two inches wide. Oh my gosh. I thought for sure that the, that I didn't know what happened. I was hoping there was nothing, you know, that my son was okay. And I turned around. He was, like, laying on his back and, like, a turtle on, on his back because there was, like, two foot of snow. And so I grabbed him by his his uh, suit, jer- you know, jerked him up off the off the ground and stood him up. You okay? You okay? And he was like, yeah, 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 I'm fine. I'm fine. I can't believe it. He goes, what just happened? And I told him what happened. And then a couple of guys stopped. And my wife was, like, three or four sleds behind us. And she drove right past us. And uh, didn't realize that any of that happened. So, uh, yeah, the sled was okay. The only thing about the sled, um, I did break the the bump stop, the left rear bump stop. The, the, the bump stop that is by the clutches. I broke that. And it was still there, but I broke it to the point to where the plate popped off of the screw. So, yeah, what a crazy ride, man. That was stupid. I never should have done that. But that was a story I was talking about. Lesson learned, man. I mean, stay right, be safe. And if you are going to pass somebody, you know, make sure it's on a straight, a level straight away. And that there's no one coming at you. You know, this is all common sense thoughts, but it's like, I wasn't even thinking, man. And I had my nine-year-old son in the back with me. I'm so stupid. But thankfully, he, he was safe. Um, it could have been so much worse. So I'm going to take you guys over to the engine and we're going to try and I'll show you how I put all this back together. All right, so we are here at the engine here outside of the garage. Just going to go ahead and 
clean up any of these surfaces that I need to. Careful with the gaskets here. These should be good to go as far as not having to worry about leaks or anything. This stuff dries so quick. And this stuff's really it's thick and sticky. Like I said, I'll put all these in here, the blue Loctite. These are six to nine foot pounds. This stuff like turns into rubber. Not even like silicone, nice firm rubber. It's pretty good. This is already preset to seven pounds. It's six to nine. guys that's it for this be right back after this stuff sets up all right guys so I gave this time to set up um, I ended up cleaning a few things here polished up the caps on these and then uh, just soda blasted these they just had a little bit of garbage on them but yeah clean them up Figured I'd do that while I waited. And then these just go on here. you know folks that's all there is to it you just gotta make sure you get everything in the right spot lined up
All right, that's it. All right. So she's in. Just have to give a little bit of a persuasion to get that sucker down there. And then we'll lock her in. So that's it. And then uh, all you got to do is um, put the secondary clutch on, which is fairly easy. I ended up loosening this up just so I could get this old girl on here. Makes it a lot easier when you get the room. So you guys know this is a half inch or 12 millimeter actually bolt and it's supposed to be torqued to about 24 foot pounds all right and then when you put your belt back on you just want to make you make sure that your belt the right direction the arrows always point towards the engine and I just get it started push it in unlock the track voila all right folks that's it so that is how you change reeds it's not really that hard um, so you have six bolts 10 millimeter bolts 10 millimeter socket bolts that are six millimeter by one thread on each of these flanges so that's 18 and then you got a couple bolts for your air box a couple screws for the air box three intake flange clamps one bolt for the secondary and you're pretty much good to go so that's it just wanted to show you guys that real quick and uh, next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and start getting the offset axle on that same sled so all right guys thanks a lot hope you enjoyed the video comment like share Subscribe if you're not subscribed. You know, anybody that you think would get a kick out of the video, go ahead and share it. All right, thanks a lot, guys. We'll see you in the next video.